What is up guys, Ultra Balls back with game 2 of the OLT round 3 series between ABR and Zook Chest. Uh, I see they both bring some nice uh, Mega Mawile, I would call balance type teams. Um, maybe ABR is a little more bulky offense, but he's still got the nice Gastro, Clef, defensive core. Uh, probably Scarf Lando on both sides. I guess ABR's doesn't have to be, it could be Scarf Cart. Um, potentially, but I like Zook has like the best mon in all of Sun Moon OU right now, which is High Dragon. So I respect that. I love that. Mon. I think that mon is super good. Uh, it has great typing for uh, for the meta right now, like being able to check uh, most Trans and Ashgren. Uh, also having just great coverage moves, meaning it's very hard to check defensively uh, because it's able to like super effectively hit hit like Bulus and Clefs and and Mawiles and stuff like that that resist the the stabs. Uh, so you see turn one, Magnezone T-Bolts on the Pex. Now, this uh, Magnezone by no means has to be Scarf, I, I feel like, especially if it's Scarf Landers and you have Intimidate with Mawile and you have, like, some sort of Kartana that could help with Pinsir. Like, I don't think this has to be Scarf. It could be Z. Uh, it's not Specs based on that damage. But, um, yeah, I feel like th if this Magnezone's not Scarf, it's a big threat. If it is Scarf, it's... Like whatever, I guess. I mean, the thing is, it could still trap the Stila. Uh, if it and like the also, I think the bigger thing though in this game is being able to trap the Mawile if the Mawile gets a little chipped, which is really important because I feel like, especially like ABR's team is very weak to like the teams like with the Clef Gastro sort of um, defensive core are very weak to to Mawile normally but you throw on a zone there and then it's not quite as weak because you sack one semi-useless member get a little chip off and then you just kill it and it's fine uh so i like that sort of theory behind that um the hydragon comes in on the t-bolt unfortunately gets paralyzed which does suck because we see it has flash cannon which means it was a big threat if it didn't get parried i guess the one good thing though is for zook is the fact that it's parried it means that it can't get toxic by this gastro which actually would probably be probably be worse um, for ABR uh, But yeah, so you see here They're just throwing off recovers and attacks and whatever they can't really do shit to each other unless the Hydreigon gets like multiple dark pulse flinches. I'm assuming it might be dark Z because that's a set that's kind of been running around uh, ABR is able to get the Landris in on a um, On a recover or on a roost though, which is really nice He's able to u-turn out probably scarf because that damage looks offensive. I think uh, to the clef um, yeah, oh, nice. We see the nice yellow magic come out on ABR's side. So, see nice Paris spam already. <laughs> always, always a broken strategy. Um, and so now that uh, ABR could probably throw his rocks up now or soft boiled, uh, he's, he was able to recover from taking the flash cannon pretty easily, I'd say. Uh, and the thing is, the flash cannon never really mattered too much on the clef because you have like the clef heals on heals on scarf landers and on, Cle on and on opposing clef and on the the toxapex so it had it had multiple opportunities to come back in and get healthy uh you see now it's back it hasn't even used to recover pp i don't think it's already almost back to full just because zook's throwing off wishes going to pex etc and abr is fine just staying in there and getting some health back so a uh, card comes out on the wish it's probably going to throw off like a knockoff i'd assume uh as zook passes the wish into landers landers and Steela were both fine, but I think um, Landers losing the Choice Scarf is a lot less important than Steela losing the Leftovers, so I agree passing into this. Uh, ABR knocks off again, predicting a double maybe, but I don't think Zook had to do that. Uh, the 42% damage I think is banded, so knowing that this thing's locked into knockoff, I feel like Zook could have even just U-turned there pretty freely. Uh, maybe ABR... N I don't really get that play, because if... If Zook U-turn there on knock, he gets in Mawile for free, uh, which is definitely a rough situation for ABR, but like I said, it's probably not getting more than one kill max, I'd assume. You have the Scarf Landers to come in and take a hit, and then you could eventually trap it with zone. Uh, we see that Earthquake does 43, so this Clef is potentially in range of another Earthquake. I don't know if ABR wants to risk that. Uh, he could go into his own landers, but you risk getting HP ice. He does just stay in and is able to live that. I was going to say, I thought 43 seemed a bit high. That that had to be like max roll. So ABR is going off not him getting, not getting like double max twice, like two times in a row. But uh, yeah, that was a risky play for sure. Uh, yeah, you see all these are doing around 40. So I don't know the roll exactly. Also with Scarf Landers, you never know their attack investment. Uh, he goes hard into Mawile here, Zook does. On, I assume like a Moonblast. 
Yeah, you see that does a good chunk just because Mawile before Mega Evolving has like terrible spadef. So uh, now this Mawile is in range of a Thunderbolt. So yeah, all AVR has to do is like pivot around, sack, sack whatever he wants to sack, and then he's going to trap it with zone. Uh, this thing is at minus one, so... Yeah, um, plus two sucker does kill Magnus Zone, I'm pretty sure. So that's something else to be wary of, because if ABR lets, like, dicks around too much and lets this thing keep SDing, then he's not going to be able to trap it. Um, but I think what ABR does now is sack, like, one of his more useless mods, which is probably the Kartana, just because there is, like... Uh, yeah, Kartana, because there is, like, a Steeler there. And still at Landers at, like, full, so... SD's up. Now he goes to Landers. Real man SDs again if you're Zook so you don't get trapped. Nope. So now he's just going to get trapped. Um, I feel like if you knock off there predicting a switch, you should always SD again so that you could like kill the zone. Which I'm pretty sure will die to plus two sucker. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see that? Did, that does... Dude, this mod is so broken. Ban. That did 53. So like, if he would have if he would have SD'd on the Landers. That's like if you're not going to sucker the, the cart, then I don't get why you wouldn't SD. I don't understand. Um, Hydreigon comes out, so the zone's gonna switch out here, probably into the Gastro again, uh, I would assume. Or Clef, because because Clef is healthy. The first time now, I don't know for sure if Parrot Hydreigon outspeeds Clefable. I don't know. It, it's close. Maybe the, if the Clef. Worst case, the Clef would only have to run like a few EVs, I think, to outspeed Hydra, but I don't know for sure if it naturally outspeeds uh, Parrot Hydra. Um, he goes Clef here on the Flash Cannon. Nice play by Zook. Uh, predicting that after the flinch. Uh, scouting for the Dark Z, I assume. Uh, and now, this thing gets Spadef dropped. Whatever. Uh, he switch out to Steela on the Soft Boiled. So, Clef, it must be... <coughs> oh, oh, sorry there. Clef must be faster than Parrot Hydra then, if that play was made. Uh, would be my guess. Uh, but that thing was able to get healthy again. And the first time ABR switched out, maybe um, scouting for Scarf Hydra. That could be possible too. Or maybe it doesn't naturally outspeed, but he's running a few speed EVs to, to outspeed the Hydreigon. I'm not sure exactly. But yeah, uh, we see Para here on another recover. Uh, when, when the Gastro's in on the Hydra, ABR wants to make sure to be very healthy because he doesn't want to get in range of a potential Dark Z, uh, dark Z move. Um, because yeah, this Gastro is really important too for... It could, it could pivot into the Steela pretty much every time. Um... But the thing is, like, I feel like that in the long run is not going to super work out because uh, Zook could always go into the clef and eventually the uh, Gastro is going to run out of PP, I feel like. But yeah, um, regardless, we see the Moonblast get thrown out there uh, as we soft foiled up on the Clefable. Clefable throws up a Wish, and now he could pass this into, I would probably pass to Steela, unless you don't want Steela getting paralyzed. Um... He goes into Landorus. I feel like this doesn't do much because he's just going to Moonblast anyway. Yeah. Um, and now, like, the Landorus didn't really gain any health there, and it can't really beat the Clefable, so it's got a U-turn into the Steela anyway, I feel like. He goes back into Clef, predicting T-Wave maybe. Yep. And that was a really nice read by Zook there. Um, definitely doesn't want the the, uh, the Steela getting paralyzed. Although, if the Steela gets paralyzed, that also means that it can't get uh, burned by, by uh, Gastro, which is something. Uh, depending on ABR's mobile set, though, that thing's definitely looking like a beast for Zook to deal with. Uh, especially now that the Lando's, like, pretty, like, slightly chipped, and rocks are up. So, yeah, I think ABR's plays here are to Smart Strike, if you think the Clef is staying in, or you'd Leaf Blade. See, like, I don't know if he's gonna go into Stila, but I think what you either do here is, you, I would just probably Smart Strike, um, or if you're gonna predict the switch, you knock off. I don't think he's going Landorus. Um, so he does just Leaf Blade, and it doesn't kill, and the Wish was in the air, so Clef is, like, all the way back. So it's like, that's why I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that play. I guess you Leaf Blade predicting, uh, Landorus, if, because Landorus would get the Wish, but Landorus is still taking a bunch from Leaf Blade, and then it's pretty low, so that the Mawile, um, so that, like, Mawile goes in, still. So I feel like you could always... I don't know. I feel like Smart Strike or Knock Off on the Steela was the play, but regardless, all right, Mawile comes in as these. Uh, you could um, SD again potentially if this is gonna like this will live any hit from Steela. You could SD again potentially win the game depending on your set. Um, yeah, that'd be my thought. But either way, Zook here is in a really bad spot because this is pretty much probably gonna claim a kill. Sacks the Hydra. 
That's why I was saying he could almost like if he SD'd again, I'm pretty sure he won. Because you only need plus three to kill Spadef packs with knockoff. And we saw it was Thunder Punch, so like if he SD'd again, I'm pretty sure he just won the game anyway. Um because now I'm pretty sure this Landers will eat will be able to eat this. And if it does, you should definitely save this and go into Clefable because this Mawile puts in a bunch of work. But he goes for the roll, doesn't get it, and the Mawile dies, which makes this a lot harder on AVR. Um, because like I said, that Mawile did kill every Mon, especially because there's SDT punch. That's like the perfect set for this uh, for this game. Uh, and it could always get an SD on the Clef, so I feel like that wasn't like optimal. Um, but yeah, now the Clefable comes out. I still think it's not. I still think it's anyone's game, especially if ABR's uh, zone is not. If like, if it's Z move, like I mentioned at the beginning, I actually think it does really well this game because um, now that the Landers is dead to rocks, it outspeeds every Mon and hits everything super effectively. Uh, and like, it looks to be Z because the Cartana was banded, the Landers was Scarf, so it's the only other Z mover. Um, on the team, so we're gonna just see some some of these clef, some of this clef on clef action. ABR is obviously at the advantage here because um, Zook is parried. So if he gets a couple pairs in a row, he could take out the other clefable. Uh, so I, I see no issue with spamming Moonblast uh, rather than maybe wanting to conserve some PP because this could this game could come down to PP stall. Being completely honest, because the combination of clef and gastro. And the combination of Stila and Pex, I don't think could break each other at all. I think they're just gonna like sit around. Now, if the Gastro is able to um, burn the Stila, then ABR's Clef would be able to wall that. But at the same time, there's still a Pex, so there'd still be PP stall action coming on. So we see a Wish get thrown up into the air by Zook as uh, ABR goes hard into Magnezone. So now we're probably just gonna see a Flash, uh, flash Cannon get thrown out. Zook might try and uh, Moon Blast this for damage. Uh, I don't think you. there's another play you could really make in this situation. Uh, and the Wish is in the air, and this should live one Flash Cannon for sure. So that's why I would consider Moon Blasting here. Um, yeah. it's about all I have to say about this play. Uh, ABR should definitely click Flash Cannon, because like I said, Zook, there's, like, Zook doesn't need to switch here. So I think you always have to Flash Cannon. Unless, if you're Z-Flash, then that would be a hot play to go for right now. Uh, but he just flashed. That's 80, 87. What the hell? I'm pretty sure that's modest. I think. I think that's modest. Yeah. Um. He did moon blast for damage, but now Zook's in a bad spot because if this is modest, that means it is Z move. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it could be, and this thing's like a huge, huge, huge threat. Um. Yeah. All right. So we go Pex here on. Thunderbolt, nice play. Uh, that was a really good play. I guess it, I guess like that play is like pretty free regardless, because Clef can't kill you with a Moonblast anyway. So, like if Clef stays in the Moonblast, it's gonna be at like five percent and in range of the next T Bolt anyway. Um, yeah, so that was just like overall the best play. Now Steela comes in, and Steela is going to get Thunderbolted. It could live this. Um, Protects on the Z electric. So there's the Z move I was talking about. Uh, it's going to do a good chunk through protect. And now he's just going to Thunderbolt it again. Kill it. Uh, and now go out into the Pex. Which is going to die I think. So he has to set Clefable. In order to get this out of range of a Thunderbolt. But the zone's free to just keep clicking T-Bolt. Uh, like I said from the beginning. Uh, if this wasn't choice it was going to be a huge issue to Zook. Because he had two Mons that get trapped. And then he had like. Pex and Clef that get hits super effectively. Uh, so the Pex was able to live that. Um, and it's out of range of a Moonblast. So now it's going to be some nice PP stalling action. Uh, I think that ABR is going to win this though. Because he could keep Earthquaking. And eventually I think uh, Pex is going to have to use too much PP to kill the Gastro. And then ABR's Clef will have more PP. Uh, the only way that doesn't happen is because if the Clefable... The Clefable will eventually have to Thunder Wave this apex and then it could actually lose the pp war because uh it could lose the pp war because of uh full paras but abr is smart after he gets toxic he switches out to cleft because now he could kind of dick around switching back and forth wasting turns so eventually the pex is going to run out of pp before 
anything dies on ABR side. So he played that really well. Uh, 2 0 for ABR. He's 3 0 now in the tour. Zooks is still very much in it at 2 1. Uh, he's a fun player to watch. Uh, but yeah, ABR just, I think, played better these two games. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe for my man Doc. And until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.